We started our journey in northern Mexico, one of the most hostile places on Earth. Hot, waterless and full of rattlesnakes. It was here that we picked up the migrants' trail. America is building an iron wall to keep illegal foreigners out. So far, it's gone up through towns, but this just forces them further out into the desert to cross. We're driving to San Miguel Gate, one of the lonely posts along the border between Mexico and the States. And we know that this area is frequented by drug gangs that are smuggling narcotics as well as people across the border. And we've just come across this old Volkswagen that has been pumped full of bullets. It may look empty, but thousands of migrants cross this bit of the desert every day. We soon came across a group of them. There are people waiting in the shade, in the heat of the day, under trees all around us. But tonight, they will all be walking across the desert on a journey that will last them for several days. Nearby, we saw people smugglers known as coyotes, who extort money for guiding people across the desert. These women said they had no cash to pay for their trip. No. What's it costing you and how are you going to pay the debt? Marta told me she was going to pay nearly $3,000 for this service. She doesn't have any money right now to pay the coyote and she's not going to pay until basically she's delivered to her job and then she'll work off her debt. It's a form of indentured labor, or in some cases bonded slavery. Until she pays off that debt, she's enthralled to the coyote. You're so young, why are you risking such a journey to go to the USA? What about your family? Did your parents approve this? No, saben. She says that she wants to go to America to improve her life, to move it forward, but she hasn't even told her parents. Dios nos cuida también. Confiamos en Dios. Martha says that she will be taken care of by God and they're both wearing crucifixes, but it's worth remembering they're crossing a desert that is known as the Devil's Highway. As we drove through a maze of tracks, we found signs everywhere of a huge human trafficking industry and its tragic consequences. We've just come across these monuments to the children and the more than 2,950 people who have died in the desert. Now it's a lot more than that, and families. Um, it says how many more will die in the desert. Every year, more than a million people try their luck up roads heading north like this. And this is a van that is taking people up to the border. These are migrants who are going to be crossing the frontier into the US. We persuaded the driver of this van to let us travel with them. But inside, the migrants were too scared to talk. They seem terrified of the coyotes, despite relying on them for their survival. Near the border, state officials stop the van to offer advice and supplies. But under Mexican law, they were powerless to prevent them from crossing. One of the things that strikes me is that these people already look exhausted. Some of them have been traveling for days or weeks, and they already look dehydrated, and they're carrying almost nothing, which is why they're accepting tiny little bottles of water. And from here, they've got 30, 40, 50 miles to walk through the desert. I spoke to Nelba, who was from Mexico's impoverished south. Why are you making this dangerous trip? She said that she was a single mum. She had left her mother and two-year-old son at home. She misses and loves him, but she's going to the United States because she wants to build a better life for him. How many days have you been told this trip will take? Three days. Three days. Mm -hmm. Three days. How much water have you got to keep going and food? She told me others were carrying her food because she was a woman and she only carried clothes. She's got almost nothing. She's got a little bit of a, of a shawl there to keep her warm and it's getting very cold at night here in the desert and she's got a little bit of a woolly hat. She's got very little food and water to get her through 
Um, this is incredibly hot during the day, and the only water that I can see is this, which is grassy. The migrants were loaded onto trucks and headed off to the border. We were told later that night they would begin trekking north on foot. We followed them out into the desert in the hope of seeing where they would actually cross the border. It's nearly dark and the group of migrants that we were following have been going so fast that we lost them. But this whole border, which runs for 2,000 miles, is so remote with so many tracks going through it that it's very easy for groups to just get lost in the desert. I crossed the frontier into the US the legal way. I heard migrants faced untold suffering on their journey, and I wanted to find out about the human costs of the Devil's Highway. US citizens. British. In Tucson, we visited a volunteer group working to halt the mounting death toll. This is what they call a death map. It shows the distribution of people who have died while crossing the desert. On average, since 1993, about one a day has died. And here you have red dots for people who died of heat, blue for cold, and black for unidentified skeletons. About 4,000 people have died since the mid-1990s, which is just an incredible figure to me. It's like a small conflict. The group is run by a priest, Robin Hoover. He wanted to show us Arizona's Badlands, where 300 bodies were recovered last year. Oh, I found an 18-year-old girl out here. Long black tresses stuck to her scalp, uh, no flesh, open rib cage, been eaten by the animals. Robin puts water tanks along the most heavily used migrant trails. It has been uh, such a heavily used station through the years that we've maintained three barrels or 150 gallons of water here. Approximately. So this is one of the water stations. Water had just dripped here in the last few hours or it wouldn't be, the soil wouldn't be that color. How many cross at the peak per day? There are days when there are probably four to 5,000 people out, out here on the ground walking. I wanted to know if the death toll was linked to America's stricter border controls. What is the humanitarian consequence of that on what happens around the desert? Every single time that we add uh, more personnel or add more technology, then the migrants are forced by, if they're going to come at all, they have to go more circuitous routes, be exposed to the elements for longer periods of time, uh, they tend to die. Only bodies actually recovered from the desert are included in the official figures. Nobody knows the true death toll. We've come to the county medical examiner's office in Tucson. When bodies are recovered from the desert, this is where they're brought for post-mortem examination. How do you do? Hey, Aiden Hartley. Here we found forensic anthropologist Dr. Bruce Anderson. He was examining the latest victim to arrive from the desert. What, what do you know about this case? Well, we know it's a woman. She probably lay out on the desert floor for, oh, six months. She's probably not more than 5'2", five, 5'3". Five, She's in her early 30s. How common is a case like this? This happens every day in the summertime. Uh, we've averaged about 175 deaths a year. But it's a horrific death. We've heard it's horrific. We know from uh, uh, both reports from survivors and, and the condition of the bodies that people will sh start shedding clothing. They will start running through uh, thorns and thickets and cut themselves up. It's not uncommon for people to hang themselves. And the assumption is that anything was better than what they were going through and they took their own life. In the, in the time that you've worked here, what has changed? Well, the sheer number of border deaths have gone up. It's a mass disaster. We're inundated with information, both dead bodies and missing persons reports. And this, the case here is a young woman who probably was healthy. Uh, she shouldn't be dead. She should be alive. She should either be home with her family 
where she should have got to the place she wanted to go, but she shouldn't have had to lose her life crossing a very dangerous part of the United States uh, border. Migrants risk their lives to escape poverty. They do the menial jobs America's economy needs to keep going. But without documents, they must live underground. I've been trying to talk to people who are working who don't have papers, but it's very difficult because they're very afraid, and their employers are as well, because under new laws they're going to be penalised if they employ people who don't have papers. Finally, in the dead of night, a woman agreed to talk to us in the restaurant where she cleaned up. Nearly half a million migrants were deported last year. But there are up to 20 million Latin Americans already living in the US without papers. So, Luida, why did you come to the United States? She said she wanted to help her family because they were poor. She also revealed gang violence at home in Guatemala had claimed the lives of two relatives. But she now has two children here both a seven and a three-year-old, and they were born in the USA, and so they have a right to stay here. If she was caught, however, she would be deported immediately. In Phoenix, we heard the authorities were cracking down on illegal migrants. This has sharply divided opinions and polarized the city. We're on our way to a place where we're told a demonstration is taking place held by migrant workers outside a Phoenix furniture store. America's Congress has rejected proposals to give amnesty to illegal immigrants already in the USA. Demonstrators were protesting against what they saw as victimization. We are not criminals, but we are the community, and we are the ones who make this community stronger. This is a legal demonstration, and there are only a couple of hundred people here. Apart from raucous Mexican music, they're very peaceful. But what's surprising is the show of force displayed by the number of police cars here and the men in uniform, this being America, all of them armed. But then there is an enormous standoff taking place now between the immigrants and the very controversial figure of Sheriff Arpaio. Ku Klux Arpaio! The tough talking sheriff has been rounding up the legal workers. So why are you arresting only those that are illegally and not criminals? They are criminals. 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 They cross this border, they are here illegally, and you can get six months in jail. And now the federal government is thinking, I'm, I'm glad they listened to me, they're going to arrest people coming across that border and put them in jail. Arpaio insists America should boot them all out. The migrants hate him, but his actions have won in popularity among a majority of local voters. I have a job to do. I'm the elected sheriff. I don't care about these uh, people that call me every name in the book. You can't really deal with the problem by chucking all of them out. Well, actually, I think we could. Uh, this is a great country. Uh, we have a lot of money. I'm sure we could hire a few buses, go state by state. I'm sure they could load up the buses and spend some gas and take them to Mexico. What, deport 20 million people? Well, I don't know about the 20 million. You don't have to deport 20 million. The day you say, everybody illegal, we're going to load up the bus, I guarantee you, they'll all leave anyway. We heard that people trafficking had become mixed up with narcotics gangs who preyed on migrants and made the job for US police even harder. We headed to the Drug Enforcement Administration's office in Tucson, which seizes nearly half of all marijuana entering the USA. Watch yourself here. Oh, is, is all of this marijuana? Yes, there's about, this is all bulk marijuana. There's probably about 50,000 pounds here right. at, at any one time. We have, this one is, 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Okay, this will be two of these bundles. Right, I'm putting 50 pounds of marijuana on my back, and it's pretty heavy. I can't even get it on, actually. Some trafficker says, you want to get to Phoenix or to some destination location? Here's a 50 pound backpack. Put this on your back, carry it for 20 miles, 
and then there's a possibility that we'll meet you at that end and then transport you the rest of the way. So this is the price of admission into the United States. This is the human exploitation part of the business that we get into. It's very, very sad. With ruthless drug gangs moving to control the human traffic, migrants face an even more dangerous journey. Driving in the border zone, security forces were out in such numbers it looked like a police state, not a democracy at peace. Even civilians had begun to police the area. We're driving through the desert on our way to visit a group known as the Minutemen. They call themselves a civil defence group defending America's borders from the invasion of migrants. Their critics call them a bunch of right-wing vigilantes. And what's happening today is a muster, they call it, in the desert. An operation they hope will yield up lots of migrants that they can hand over to the Border Patrol. Okay, let's do it. See this track here? Mm -hmm. This guy was through here last night. So, so all of these fresh tracks are people coming this way, are they? Yes. So we're walking through the desert along one of the trails down which a lot of the migrants come and there are armed Minutemen on either side. The Minutemen's plane spotted illegal aliens, or in their jargon, IAs. 10-4, they spotted one with black clothing on at this, at this point. From the aircraft they spotted one? and hopefully uh, they'll be able to uh, track these individuals here that uh, we're seeing uh, carrying large backpacks, which we suspect are probably carrying drugs. 10-4, SR-1, are you anywhere near them? Well, we lost them. Uh, well, I think we've pretty much given up the search. So is that quite a common experience that they've, they've slipped through the net? Absolutely. It's very tough to stop this. Uh, we got 3,000 miles. This is, uh, well, from that mountain to that mountain is ground zero. We're at what? What kind of war? We're at a world war, a war on terror. And what we have here is a back door wide open. And we have documented times, cases of our enemies, terrorist enemies, coming across this border. The Minutemen claim they want to defend America's borders from the threat of outsiders. They know that the migrants tend to move under the cover of darkness, and so the volunteers settled in for a night operation. Minutemen don't arrest migrants. They'll track them until Border Patrol arrives. On the thermal imaging monitor, we can see th three figures returning through the desert. That may be two Border Patrol and one person they've captured. All I understand is that they are on the run. Is that correct? That is correct. Did the rest get away? Out of a group of 10 migrants, Border Patrol agents caught just this one, while the rest got away. Back in Phoenix, Sheriff Arpaio's deputies had also been out arresting migrants. They had stopped a vehicle packed with 12 people, including a small child. And this is what happens to the ones who get caught the migrants would now be processed and deported. You can just see the, 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 the kid sleeping with his mother there. I wanted to talk to these people who looked exhausted and terrified. How long did it take you to cross? Forty years. Why was it a, a memorable experience? He says it took two and a half days to cross the border and, and he said that he, it's an experience he'll never forget, that it was dangerous, that sometimes he felt that he wouldn't be able to go on. 
He said this comes from the heart. He thought it was unfair that he'd been targeted when he only came to the US with the best of intentions, for a better life and to work. We return to the Mexican side of the border. Corruption in Latin American countries has left millions in poverty. Until that is resolved, many will continue to seek for a better life in the USA. The wall has become a tragic symbol of division between rich and poor worlds. As we watched, US agents were deporting yet more migrants. These people coming up behind me have just been deposited back across the border in Mexico. There are buses arriving day and night. There are literally thousands of people being returned across the border. Tardes. Yeah. Buenas. Buenas. Hello. How many days did you walk? Seis días. And when were you caught? She was caught today at 4 a.m. She says that she's been walking for six days and you can see that she's visibly in pain. At a shelter for deportees, they were fed and given medical care. These people claimed the Americans had denied them even water when they were arrested. Here, while these women are having their feet treated, there's a gang of coyotes over there waiting to pounce as soon as they come out of the center to offer them a route back towards the United States. We convinced one of them to talk to us on condition we hid his face. I wanted to know how the US was affecting business. As America builds more walls, uses more men with guns, helicopters and everything else, do you think that they're stopping people from going across? No creo que siga parando la gente. Pues como nosotros, como le digo, de varios viajes que yo he ido. He told me that he's been across about 20 times and he's only been caught twice. He's taken about 150 to 200 people across. He doesn't think that all of this money being spent on this wall and the huge technology and the guns and the deployment of thousands of agents is having any effect at all. More migrants hung around by the fence. As night fell, the coyotes waited to send the next group across. Militarization of America's border has failed to stem the flow of migrants, but stricter measures have pushed them into the hands of violent drug gangs and farther out into the waterless desert, causing untold human suffering. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.